Today on iCrime. A Tesla is targeted in a parking lot. And later, a porch pirate gets busted. Why are you picking him up? Delivered. You're not delivering, you went and picked him up. Wrong house. And later, a reminder that it's always better to talk things out. I'm Elizabeth Vargas, and this is iCrime. People aren't just catching crimes on their cell phones, they're catching them on their security cameras as well. In this video, the cameras on a Tesla car capture a woman vandalizing the vehicle in broad daylight, all because of a parking space. In late August of 2020, Sherry Johnston arrived to work in Sumter, South Carolina in her brand new Tesla. Johnston decides to park it safely out of the way in a section of the open air parking lot that's usually empty, far away from any other parked cars. The car sits all alone in the parking lot when suddenly another car, a silver Toyota Camry, drives into the spot right next to the Tesla. The driver takes her time to maneuver her car as close as possible, even leaning out to check the distance. In a wide open parking lot with plenty of empty spaces, this is odd, but not illegal. The next day, however, the woman returns and once again takes great care to park her car as close as humanly possible to the Tesla. This time, though, she has more nefarious intentions. The silver Toyota's driver's side door opens, revealing a woman dressed for work holding a handbag and something else. She has a knife in her hand. She drags a three-inch blade along the side of the Tesla, scratching deep into the paint. The vandalism is caught by Tesla's four-camera security system. The car's cameras also catch the Toyota driver coming back to her own car five minutes later, and they capture a good image of her face and the license plate on her car. Using the video, police are able to locate the woman pictured, and when she is shown the footage, she admits to scratching the Tesla. She tells police she was angry the Tesla driver parked in her spot, even though there is no reserved parking in the lot and even though there were plenty of other spaces. The woman agreed to pay for the damages to avoid criminal charges. Next, a high school graduation ceremony is a celebration of accomplishment, transformation, and the transition from child to adult. It's not a place you'd ever expect a fist fight. But in our next video, a group of people attending a high school graduation lack the maturity of the students they're supposed to be celebrating. Proud friends and family members record the commencement ceremony for Arlington High School's Class of 2017. As the graduates make their way down the aisles of Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee to receive their diplomas, some older guests decide to set a bad example for the future generation. It all begins with an argument over a seat. You can't say seat. Well, well, we don't care. You we can. ran into y'all, y'all were saving seats. We said no. You so that's why you got this rap. The woman in the brown dress is Amanda Murphy, who's there to see her niece graduate. She accuses another family of saving seats and later shoves an older man as he tries to take a video of his new graduate. Within seconds, the shoving match escalates into an all-out brawl. As the graduates are making their way to the stage, parents and grandparents and aunts are rolling in the aisles. Onlookers plead with the brawlers to stop. Girl. That's a graduation! That's a graduation! That's a graduation! 
Eventually, the woman who appeared to start it all is in handcuffs and on the ground of the church lobby. The men who have Murphy detained are private security hired by Bellevue Church. A day following the ceremony, Arlington High School released a statement on Facebook congratulating the class of 2017, but also noting that it was unfortunate that a couple of adults in the audience exhibited the behavior they did prior to the ceremony beginning and thus caused a distraction from the celebration of our students' accomplishments. Amanda later tells reporters that what you didn't see in that viral video is the man sneezing on her niece and elbowing her sister. She claims her actions were in self-defense. In the end, no one pressed charges. Arlington High says it hopes to shift the focus back to the students and away from the poor decisions by some of the adults in attendance. Coming up, two drivers who get into an argument that escalates quickly and violently. Smile, you're on camera. Why are you picking him up? You're not delivering, you went and picked him up. Wrong house. And later, from fight to friendship. Our next clip reveals two drivers who get into an argument that escalates quickly and violently. A delivery driver is double parked on a busy Philadelphia street, blocking another car in while he goes to pick up an order. The delivery driver gets back in his car, but doesn't move out of the way for Corey Curtis, the driver parked along the street, who's now blocked and can't get out. The two men exchange words when suddenly the delivery driver punches Curtis, knocking him to the ground. The delivery driver then goes to leave, but at that moment, Curtis, still on the ground, pulls a gun out of his pocket. He gets up and fires three times at his attacker. The delivery driver manages to drive off, but police say he pulled over only a few moments later, bleeding from gunshot wounds to his face and his back. A good Samaritan stopped and helped the victim get to Jefferson Hospital. Joining us is Elizabeth Armour, who witnessed everything that day. Tell me what you saw. So I was about 40 feet away mm -hmm. uh, from uh, a gentleman who, who uh, Mr. Curtis, who uh, wanted to uh, get out of a parking space. And there was a, a delivery car, a second car that had come up and had absolutely completely blocked him in the space. And it was at that point that um, the delivery man um, very quickly escalated. Very quickly, I would say within a matter of seconds, uh, the delivery man uh, got out of the car and physically assaulted uh, Mr. Curtis, uh, pushing him down on the ground. Uh, his head missed the curb by about three inches uh, and then turned around to get back in the car. Um, and it was at that point when he was back in the car, seated in the driver's seat, that Mr. Curtis was getting up from the ground and took out a gun uh, that he had in the back uh, and, and shot the delivery man. And Mr. Curtis came back around the car on the driver's side and um, was physically, you could see he was very physically, um, emotionally struck by what he had done. He took a position uh, as if he was going to be sick, as if he was going to throw up. Uh, but then got back in his car because by then he had the opportunity to pull out from the curb and get out of the parking spot, which he proceeded to do. And drive away? He drove away. Okay. Elizabeth, thank you. It must have been frightening to uh -huh. see all of this. Uh, didn't really register. It's like watching a film. And then it's only later um, that you go inside and you say to yourself, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I'm a victim of gun violence too, because it's very traumatic to see that happening so close and also uh, not to know um, the condition, whether the person who was shot is alive or dead at that point. Okay, all right. Elizabeth, thank you so much. You have a great weekend. Thank you so much for having me.
Cedra Sherrod Strong is a police lieutenant with the LA Sheriff's Department. And I, I have to ask you, Lieutenant, witnesses to this entire thing say that they feel the delivery driver is the one who started this conflict and escalated this conflict by refusing to move the, the delivery van and refusing and, and becoming aggressive when asked to do so. Does that matter at all? Um, it does to a certain degree because of the way that we interact with each other. Um, but even though he started it, uh, any person has the ability to de-escalate a situation or to create some type of calm and bringing something calm without knowing everything and seeing just a brief clip. We can only go with what the witnesses saw and what they think was happening. But um, I believe that it doesn't matter in the big scope of things and how it ends. Witnesses also seem to feel that perhaps the driver might have reached for that gun in self-defense. Does that jibe with what you're seeing on that video, self-defense? I think self-defense is an immediate, not something where he fell back and had time to pull and draw a weapon. I did notice that he hit his head on the curb. Uh, before standing up. So he seemed to be a little out of it toward the end of the video as other people ran up to assist. Uh, but I would not say that it was so much of a self-defense because it wasn't right in the moment. It was more, you, you did something to me and now almost embarrassment or pride or ego that brought him up and then to actually shoot another human being over a parking space or being blocked in. The victim, who remains unnamed, was shot in the jaw, the arm, and the abdomen. He was transported to Jefferson Hospital in critical condition. The shooter, Curtis, turned himself in two days later. He was charged with multiple crimes, including attempted murder, aggravated assault, and reckless endangerment. Next, an Uber driver decides to cancel a ride when he realizes his passengers are underage and also eating in his car. But they refuse to get out and even call the police on him. Uber, the largest rideshare company in the country, has some rules. One, a rider must be 18 years of age or older to have an Uber account. When driver Edwin Vasquez picks up a passenger in Union City, New Jersey, he quickly realizes that she and her friend are unaccompanied minors. Not only that, they refuse to wear masks and insist on eating in his car. He ends the ride, but that doesn't mean the girls are going anywhere. You can't cancel the ride. I just paid $14 to go to school. After Vasquez cancels the ride, his passenger tries to force him to take them anyway. And when that doesn't work, she calls 911. Order another one. You could call the cops. It's fine. You could call the cops. Let me call the cops, man. That's fine. Call the cops. Nah, bro. You being mad disrespectful. You're the one that's in the car. You're Hi, I have an Uber driving. Uber driver being mad disrespectful. I just paid $14 to get to school and he's kicking us out. But it seems the police don't respond to calls of mad disrespect. When Vasquez gets out of the car to get them to leave, they demand he pay their bus fare to school. You being mad disrespectful. That's good. You being mad disrespectful, no. You got a dollar for the I, bus? You yeah, got you got bus? $5 for the bus? <laughs> no. Still on the phone with 911, the passenger and her companion continue to refuse to leave the car. Yo, the Uber driver is being mad disrespectful, yo. And he just ca he just canceled the ride because I was eating the car and wearing a and not wearing a mask. Uh, I just, just put my mask. To order another one, like. Vasquez gets back in the car, but his underage passenger continues to berate him. You're useless. Okay. You're going to hell for this. All right. Keep talking, you're still recording. I don't give You don't, all right, then you're gonna you go viral. You was being mad disrespectful. I told you, okay, I'm not gonna eat in the car. All right, then go viral, I don't care. No, okay, so you're go gonna viral. post this online? Go ahead, post it. Go ahead, I don't care. Finally, Vasquez has had enough and calls the police himself. His passenger continues to defiantly eat her mac and cheese. I just not even care. We paid for four stop because I just turned our ride saying turn Man, this that. So you're making a snake one, one two, for no one. reason. Um, I have uh, two oh. individuals in my vehicle that are doing Uber and they don't want to get out the car. What's the 
Yeah, we paid, paid fourteen dollars. No, the the girl we called. We paid That's, fourteen dollars. The girl called. The, we paid fourteen dollars. You could hear, you can hear her in the background. They won't get out. My, they won't, we're, we're not gonna get out. The recording stops after he makes the call. After the phone call to the police, the girls eventually leave the car, tossing the empty container of mac and cheese on the hood. He did not file any charges. Coming up, a porch pirate is confronted. Why are you picking him up? Delivered. You're not delivering, you went and picked him up. Wrong house. And a quick change of heart. Porch pirates are thieves who steal newly delivered packages from people's front doors. It's a crime that has been on the rise since the start of the pandemic, with 49 million Americans reporting packages stolen in 2021. Well, this next video shows a brave man deciding to do something about it. Why are you picking him up? Delivered. You're not delivering, you went and picked him up. Wrong house. Gene Pearson, an employee at the Covenant Presbyterian Church in Chicago, saw this man stealing packages from a house across the street. Why are you picking him up? David Gaskin is a former assistant chief of police for the LAPD. Chief, we've been seeing a real rise in these porch pirates, these people stealing packages off other people's doorsteps. Is this because of the pandemic and more people ordering more things and therefore more packages are being delivered? Well, it's a combination of things. Obviously, Amazon has grown significantly. We have packages delivered all over the country all the time now. But because of all of that opportunity, then you're going to have criminals who are going to take advantage of the situation. What crimes are being committed here? Is it just petty theft or is it something more? Generally, it's petty theft, depending on the jurisdiction. But of course, there could be items of significant value in some of these uh, boxes. Uh, deliveries, etc. And if they arise to a significant level, then it could be a more serious crime. What should a person do if they <laughs> happen to catch somebody in the act of trying to steal packages from either their own doorstep or somebody's nearby? Well, obviously, in this situation, again, it was the video camera, probably off the cell phone that was recording the event itself. So it's serving as an assistant to you as a witness. So between the evidence provided by the camera and your testimony, that should be sufficient to get a prosecution on this individual. Should you make noise? Should you try and confront the person while you're recording or should you quietly surreptitiously record? Well, I, I would try to be as surreptitious as I could. If you're going to be as obvious as it was in this case here, you have to realize that you're probably exposing yourself to some potential danger because you don't know if this is a violent individual or whether or not this individual has some kind of a weapon on them. Not only did Pearson record the theft. I just want to get your plate number. If you're telling the truth, that's cool. He also managed to get the perpetrator's license plate, even though the man tried to cover it up. While no arrests were made as a result of the video, the more people keep an eye out for their neighbors, the better and safer we'll all be. Our last clip might just restore your faith in humanity. What starts out as a fistfight turns into a swift rescue as two men scuffle in a New York City subway station. Let's take a look. The footage begins with two men fighting on a subway platform when suddenly one of them slips and falls down onto the tracks. In an instant, he's in a potentially dangerous spot. The other man quickly acts and grabs the fallen man by the arms, pulling him back up on the platform. The video ends when the rescuer helps the other man to his feet. No one was charged in the incident. And that's it today for iCrime. We want to see your videos. Send them to us at iCrime.tv. I'm Elizabeth Vargas reminding you, be alert and hit record.